Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. I decided to do a part two of what do you do with a tire when you're in the middle of nowhere. So I showed you how to take off the wheel with minimal tools, especially on a GTS where you'd normally need a maximum number of tools to do that job. It's not exactly the easiest tire or wheel to remove from a scooter. Uh, all the other Vespa models are similar. If you got a vintage Vespa, you're probably laughing at this video. As I saw one comment, there's only one tool you need for a vintage Vespa. It's a um, 13 millimeter socket, and you can just throw the scooter over on the side in a grass field, split the rims. But we're talking about modern tubeless tires. And I'll tell you the beauty of a tubeless tire is they're very, very reliable, unlike a tube tire. Typically, you can get a nail in a tube, tubeless tire. Uh, it's not gonna puncture the tire, the nail will just be in place. There's been plenty of times we changed tires and there's still a nail in the tire, completely worn down. The idea is a lot of times the nail will go in and just seal the puncture it made. But say you're not so like luck lucky and you lose either the stem or you have a big slash or you just got to change the whole tire. Let's just see what, how that works and how it works out. I'm going to just try doing this, uh, see how it goes. I've Changed plenty of tires on the side of middle of nowhere, mostly on dirt bikes because everybody, when they break down on a dirt on my dirt bike trips, they usually look at me like I'm I'm like the star mechanic. But all right, let's jump into the tools that I'm going to have on me and what I think you may need if you're going to do this. So the number one most important tool that you'll need to change a tire, whether you're changing like a little eight inch tire or some huge 37 inch truck tire is a tire iron. It's a tool that's been with us for years, hundreds of years probably, since Punamac tires have been around for a while. Uh, we have these available on our ScooterWest.com website, Tool TI, Tool TI. And you can get away with one, but I'll tell you two is always better, and three is like golden, but that's probably overkill. So a common leak point on scooter tires is sometimes a valve stem or the valve stem core will, will leak. Uh, this is referred to as a Schrader valve. If you're a bicycle guy, you know there's like Presta and Schrader. Schrader is what all the cars use. It's like, I guess Mr. Schrader designed it back in 1896 or whatever it is. I don't know exactly what year, but you're gonna need the tool that removes the core. A very, very common tool. You can, you can find it at a bicycle shop. Any bicycle shop would have it. Uh, Walmart, any automotive uh, repair or I mean, parts place would have it. And it's pretty much got like a slot like this. You can get a tool like this as a reamer or just a basic little tool. This is like a Michelin promo one I have. And typically you want to remove the stem right out of it. The next most important thing you're going to need is uh, some way or means to inflate the tire. Um, there's plenty of 12 volt um, air pumps that run on 12 volts. There's cordless ones. Uh, the most compact style air inflator is a CO2 cartridge. And I'll put a photo of the ones that we have available on our websites, like a complete kit comes with a couple CO2 cartridges. I have a couple of them in my off-road bikes, my street bikes, uh, several of my scooters I use frequently and I move them around always just good to have your own personal source of inflation. Today I'm going to use a little uh, portable air pump and see how that works. Uh, the last two things we're going to need, if you're going to change a stem, you're not going to just be able to get this in and out on your own. And just like with the tools needed to pull the wheel off, you're going to need a diagonal set of pliers. So say you need to change a stem out, you can cut the old stem out. Uh, also, diagonals work very good as levers, so we'll use this as the tool to pull it into the wheel, and I'll show you how that works. And you're going to lap the last tool you're going to need. You're going to need some means to demount the tire from the, um, the rim. Sometimes it is possible to do with tire irons. If you work and work and work, you can dismount it, but to get the tire off the rim, you definitely need tire irons, but to dismount the tire from the bead, um, I'm going to use something that weighs a lot and rolls, and that's called a car. So here I have an older Vespa GTS uh, wheel and tire. Uh, I mean, the tire's pretty old because look at this lovely cracking. Uh, if I was going on a cross-country trip, this tire may have tread, but this is not a tire I'd really trust. Uh, 
the manufacturer date isn't all that old, it's 2013, but it's probably uh, from a scooter that's been left out in the sun. I just had it kicking around in the, the shop. The stem is in pretty poor condition as well. So I'll just go over all the steps of putting a used tire on it or something. Typically, if you're trying doing a cross-country road trip, I hope you have a tire on you because you're not going to easily find a 12-inch tire in the middle of nowhere. Um, the first step you're going to need to do to get this tire off the rim is take what air is out of there. I mean, if it's got a flat, you probably lost most of the air anyways. So with a, the valve core tool, just go ahead and remove that and it's the little Schrader valve comes out and that's commonly a source for a leak and you can use something like uh, soapy water to spray the whole tire the valve core and you can find a leak with soapy water pretty much just bubbles up pretty straightforward to do so this may be a two-person task obviously you got to find some uh, nice helpful willing car driver that's going to run your tire over and that's how we'll get it demounted so hopefully somebody pulled over wants to help you out you have everything, you got the tire, but you got to figure out how to get this stubborn old tire off the rim. And there's no amount of stomping on it that's probably going to demount a tubeless tire. Um, yeah, I'm going to get the tire under here. I'll tell you, if you got really nice looking rims that are on a brand new bike, uh, you're going to cringe at all the stuff I'm going to do to get this tire off. But when you're on the side of the road, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, you have no choice. The rim doesn't really cost you that much if you, if you really wanted to have a perfect one. All right, we'll see what happens here. You may have to try a couple times and move the tire around. And this is where a helper would be helpful. You know, try, try moving the tire around a couple times. I could see it's starting to push it down off the rim. But this is going to be your most difficult thing to do if you're in the middle of nowhere trying to get a tire off a rim. So. And I think I heard a little pop, so let's see how it looks. And sometimes you can work, work the bead. I can tell you the most difficult tires are the ones that have been on the, um, the rim for a long time. So I did hear a little pop, and I can tell that it's kind of worked the wheel around. And at this point, there we go. So we're good on this side. And the whole idea is we separated the stubborn bead of the tire from the edge of the rim right there. And it is possible if you're in the middle of nowhere, if you worked with your tire irons for hours on end, you could just keep on working your way around. But I'll tell you the car trick, a couple run, you know, runs over it, usually will will do the trick. So go ahead and flip it around and you gotta do the same on the other side as well. So so run over in a couple spots and it should demount the other side as well. A little bit too much, but that did the trick. Don't want to run over the rim. You could actually probably crack the rim if you do it too much, but. And there we go. Now we got the tire demounted. So also is what makes the job just a little easier. Uh, you're going to get your hands dirty. A little soapy water. Uh, if you don't have soapy water, some other type of lubricant, dish soap, uh, in a pinch, you can use the motor oil from the scooter, but it definitely helps, helps with the job getting the, um, the tire to work off, off the rim. Um, both sides are demounted, which is the important part, and you're going to cringe because we're probably going to nick up the rims. Uh, one thing you can do if you really want to take care of your rims, you know, obviously I don't really care about this rim, you could put, cut up an old milk jug and you, the plastic from a milk jug is, um, will help protect the rim. So I have my knees here and I'm pushing the bead into this relief and I'll show you what the relief looks like. It's this area of the wheel where it's um, set in a little bit 
and you use your knees to kind of push it in there. And this is where two tire irons comes in handy. So you got the tire up in one spot, get the tire lever in another spot. And if it's if you struggle with it, move it closer to your other tire iron. So and then pull out that one, leave the tire iron in there. Of course, you can do it with one. It just takes you three times longer. So and at this point, we're pretty close. And this was the easier bead to, to work with. We're going to move on to the uh, the second bead, which is a little more difficult because it's kind of more inside the the tire. So. so we got the first bead off. Now we're on to the more difficult bead. So at this point, there's a couple ways to go about it. Sometimes I've done it from the front side. We're going to go from this back side here. And I'm using the spoon size, you know, the curves part of the tire iron. And you want to get the rim. You can see how I'm just kind of working it all around. And you kind of just got to do it in baby steps to, until you can start getting the, um, the rim separated from the tire. So at this point, it's starting to um, see how the bead is actually getting on the other side of the rim. That's kind of what we want. And then you got to get one of your tire irons out and then make another little step. So, so we got the tire iron out and you're going to have to slip the tire iron back in just above where your other tire iron resides. It is possible to do this with one tire iron. It's just a lot more work. And there you go. You're able to slip the rim right out. So at this point, if this is the only tire you had and it had a big puncture in it, you could certainly uh, use a bicycle patch to patch the hole. It's not really recommended. They don't really recommend patching motorcycle or scooter tires. Not really the safest thing. Uh, if you wanted to plug it, you could certainly do that while it's on the, um, the bike. Or maybe you were just irresponsible and wore this tire down until it was bald or had such serious cracks where it just blew out the sidewall. Uh, this tire just would be trashed at that point. Next, we're going to work on the stem. Say you need to change just the stem out. You know, it is possible to not to change a stem without dismounting the whole tire. Uh, but typically with the stems, what I like to do is just cut them right out with a diagonal set of pliers. So just do that. Can't really save it too well. So the new stem. Normally I have a, a special tool that pulls these in. Some type of soapy water or any other type of lubricant. It can be anything pretty much. You get the stem in there. This is where the diagonal pliers that you had to deal with the cutter pin. I'm not squeezing the, the diagonal so tight that I'm going to cut the, um, this brass nozzle off. I'm just squeezing enough. There's that little bit of an um, edge right there. And, and the idea is you put it there and then lever against the rim and then you can pull it right in. Uh, you could just grab it with even needle nose, but that's the easiest way to get the, the valve uh, stem in. So I got my replacement tire. Uh, it happens to be like a nearly new takeoff tire. You know, still got the fuzzies on it. Uh, just want to use it as my example to put on a rim. Uh, front rated tire. They do always have an arrow on the direction, or, or most tires that are directional are going to have an arrow based on what direction uh, the tire goes on. So if you're sitting on the front of a Vespa, the, the front rim goes on like such. Uh, the direction of the tire would be like this. I'm not going to show how to balance the tire today because uh, that's not something you're going to be able to do on the side of the road and probably isn't really all that critical when you're just looking to get another tire on the, the scooter. So again, soapy water, some type of something to lubricate. Probably don't want to get too much moisture in the rim, but it's more important that we get the tire on the um, on the rim or on the, so you can see it's kind of wanting to slide right in. I'm just kind of sliding it into the, uh, into pretty much sliding the rim into the tire. Then this is where we need to take over with our tire irons. So to get a tire iron in there, pretty much just the opposite of what you were doing 
with the um, thing, you know, with when you took it off. Um, again, don't take big steps. You gotta move it a little bit closer. Do a baby step with the tire iron. Slip your other tire iron out. Move along. Get the tire iron in. Slide it a little bit towards. And I'm using the little spoon, the little lip of the, the edge. That's right on the bead of the tire. And I'll show you what I mean. You know, there's, there's a little bit of technique to this and you, you just gotta do it to kind of master it. And I'll tell you, by no means I'm like a pro. I, it's not something I do every day. I'm not a tire shop that has no tire machine. You know, I have a tire machine at the shop. It's like, of course, I'm never gonna do this at the shop. Might be the first time I've ever changed a tubeless tire at my current shop with just basic tools. So it's something I would do on the side of the road when I'm in the middle of nowhere. So again, kind of I'm using my uh, forearm just to keep that tire iron from flinging back when I get the next tire iron in, pull it back. And you know, you got to watch out. This is, even this is a dangerous job because sometimes the tire irons will fling around, you know, the and the last little bit is where it gets a little difficult sometimes. So I'll get this other tire iron out. And there you go. So that was it. And what I mean by when I was slipping the tire iron in there, you just want the little bit of a spoon. See how it's got the curve? That's where I'm using that. Just if you have too much of the tire iron, it's too thick and doesn't really do, the leverage doesn't work. But you just get that little spoon edge on the bead of the tire. Now the last part, flip it over. And you could get it started sometimes just by with a little bit of um, muscle in it on there. See, I'm using my knee as just like an aid. Get the tire irons under here. You can use two knees if that helps you a little bit. See, I'm holding the bead down into this relief right here. Maybe I should do a part three, doing it with one tire iron, see how much I struggle. Believe me, it is possible, but it's definitely more of a struggle with, uh, with just one tire iron. See how I'm working each of the tire, leaving one tire iron in there as I'm, I'm working around it. I'm using my knees to kind of hold the, uh, the tire into that relief on the, the wheel. And at this point, I'm using the curved part of the tire iron. This could be the difficult part is the last little bit. And there we go. There it is. Well, that's great. You got the tire on the rim. Now what? We got to get to air in it. Um, I'll warn you, the area where you want to seat first is at the stem. Because the stem kind of sometimes will hold up the uh, tire. But see here, it's not really seated. And same with right here. We're gonna start putting air into this rim. And one way to get the, the rim sometimes to inflate quicker is you could take the valve core out. The idea right now is to get the tire to seat. And obviously if you have a high pressure source, you'll be able to seat the tire a lot quicker. So I pulled the core out. So hypothetically, Joe Samaritan has an air pump in the back seat of his Jeep or whatever he's driving. So it's just the basic little 1201. This thing does not build that much volume, but it will build the pressure. Uh, old school cars with an old school cigarette lighter. And we'll see how this all works. Looks like the key has got to be on. Let's see. I don't know how it even works. Let's see if I can get it all working. So guess what? Joe Good Samaritan's air pump didn't work. And what a surprise that a lot of those little air, air pumps aren't all that reliable. So the next best thing, you find a gas station. Uh, and I would say every single gas station has got air, hopefully free air. Sometimes they charge you for it, it's incredible. But um, also when I have a pressure gauge, obviously I'm kind of cheating with a nice calibrated digital gauge. Again, I don't have the valve core in here right now. Uh, the tire is mostly seated right where this valve stem is. That's pretty important. And we're gonna go ahead and put air in it and see what happens. 
ends. When you hear those two clicks or snaps, that means the tire is seated. And the best thing is if you don't have the valve core in there, you're gonna uh, be able to get a much higher volume air, so you're gonna have a, a more likely uh, chance of success to get the uh, tire seated. And, and if you're really crazy, you could use some type of uh, propellant that you can light on fire that would build up gas pressure to pop it, but I'm not gonna show how to do that. You can find tons of videos of fails and successes of that method. Um, it's pretty fun to do, but not exactly the safest method. So once you get the valve core in there, make sure it's tight, but not over tighten. Go ahead and set the pressure. You know, this would be a front tire, maybe 25, 28 PSI would be ideal for a front tire. There you go. Look at that. We successfully changed a tire without a tire shop and a tire machine. So there's your part two on doing tires on a modern Vespa with pretty much nothing. Uh, I have a little um, comment challenge for everybody that's in the United States. And somebody's gonna end up with this wheel here. So is what I want you to do is, this is a 120-70-12 Michelin City Grip tire that I put on a used crusty GTS 250 rim a perfect spare for somebody, or maybe somebody needs it. Uh, guess what the weight of this tire is in good old fashioned American pounds. So pounds, and I want it to the 10th. So I'm kind of throwing you off. I got some fractions in there. Not, not even a fraction, a 10th. So what is this tire and wheel weigh? Does it weigh 10.2 pounds or is it 17.4 pounds? Put your guess in the um, comments. In the first comment that gets the exact number, you know, umpteen point, whatever, I'll give this wheel to them. You have to be in North America or in United States to get this. You got to pay for the shipping, I'm sorry, but you're getting a free wheel with a perfectly good tire. So right now it's early June. Uh, hope you enjoyed this funny video that I did and hopefully it helped you out. Hopefully you were the lucky winner of this beautiful tire that's signed by Robot here. All right, thanks for watching. Robot got his hands dirty. I hope that helps somebody out. Uh, support this channel by shopping on our website, scooterwest.com, for everything modern Vespa, vintage Vespa. Whatever scooter you got, if you got tubeless tires, I hope this helped you out. Uh, maybe you're on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere and you need to change a tire and you stumble across my video. Uh, while you're at it, hit the su subscribe button. Helps out this channel. Uh, hit, hit the thumbs up. Hit the little notification bell. Check out the channel. I got tons of scooter related videos. I'd love to cover all the cool scooters out there, but mostly all about Vespas. Till next time, this is Robot here.